All right, finished up with index of refraction and back for more. Good for you. All right, what I want to do tonight is I want to talk about Snell's Law. And uh, before we get into the slides, because the slides, as you probably saw online, are, 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 are two problems that I'm going to work through. Before we get into that, let's, let's, let's give you a visual and show you what we're talking about here. This is this is from the FET simulation. Okay, you can see we've got we've got the laser that we used last class, and there's two features with this laser. You can you can view it as wave fronts, which is this here. These are the these are the wave fronts that are going down, or you can use it as a ray like that. Okay, and, and so what we're going to do is flip back and forth with this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take I'm going to take it. Actually, you know what? Before I do that, yeah, I'm going to take it and I'm going to move it over like this. And you can see this line right here. This this is the normal. Okay, the normal is a line that's perpendicular to to the surface. It runs at a 90 degree angle to the surface. And and what I have is is this surface right now. It, it's it's air on both sides. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change one of the one of the mediums. I'm going to change this bottom one from air. I'm going to change it to glass. Okay, and as you can see, when that, when I did that, there's two things that happen. Okay, you still have your incident light going in, or if I switch it, this is called an incident ray, and the incident ray comes in towards the boundary, towards the surface. Okay, and when it hits the surface, two things happen. One is this: you get the 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 light ray is reflected, and as you can see, okay. You have the incident ray comes in and it reflects at the same angle. All right, this angle with the normal is called the angle of incidence. There it is, right there. It's the angle between the normal and the incident ray. That's the angle of incidence, and this right here is called the angle of reflection. Okay, and that's the angle between the normal and the reflected ray. Okay, but we're not here to talk about reflection. We're here to talk about refraction. All right, and we said last class that refraction was what happens when a, a light ray or a wave, a light wave or a, another type of wave, moves from one material or one medium to another medium. All right, and in this case, it's going from air to glass, and it's slowing down. And when it slows down, the wavelength gets gets smaller. And you can also see this. You can see that the light when it slows down it bends towards the normal okay all right and that introduces a concept known as Snell's law Snell's law gives you a relationship between between two materials this material which is n1 and this material which is n2 so index of refraction 1 index of refraction 2 all right it also looks at the angle between the light rays and the normal this is the angle of incidence. All right? It's the angle between the incident ray and the normal. And down here, this is called the angle of refraction. Okay, it's it's the angle between the refracted ray and the normal. Alright? And so what Snell's law does is it it gives you a mathematical relationship between the index of refraction of two materials the angle of incidence, which is right here, and the angle of refraction, which is right here. And that mathematical relationship is N1, that's the material above, times sine I, the ang sine of the angle of incidence, equals N2, that's the material down here, times sine R, that's the sine of the angle of refraction down here. Okay, this this equation right here, this equation is known as Snell's law, and that's and that's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to do a couple of practice problems with Snell's law, and we're going to use it to to predict how much this light bends. So as I change the light, the angle of incidence, all right, you can see that the angle of refraction refraction changes with it. Now, if there there is no difference in the index of refraction then this angle, angle of incidence, and angle of refraction, well, they're the same angle, all right? But then, as I increase it, the light ray bends towards the normal, okay? And that's refraction, and that's what we're talking about tonight. So let's get at it. All right, 
So that's Snell's Law, okay, and, and that's the formula that we're going to use tonight. So let's take a look at a problem. Here's a problem, and it talks about the, the angle of refraction. They want to know, find the angle of refraction for a light ray with an angle of incidence of 35 degrees that travels from air, n equals 1, to glass, which n equals 5. Ignore sig figs and make sure your calculator is in degrees for this problem. Now that last part is important. Okay, now to do that, if you have a TI calculator, what you need to do is you need to click on mode, okay, and then you're going to look and there's going to be a, a whole list of settings. I think it's the third setting down. It'll say radians and degrees. And you want to select degrees and hit enter and then just hit clear. And, then, and if you do that, you should get the, the correct answers all night. And if it's in radians, you're going to get frustrated quick because you're going to get the wrong answers. Okay? All right, so t let's take a look at this question. So we have an angle of incidence of 35 degrees travels from air, n equals 1, to glass, n equals 1.5. Let's take a look at this. So here's our protractor, and we're going to put it out here. There we go. And we're going to set our angle of incidence. Here it is at 35. So there's an angle of incidence of 0, because remember, angle of incidence comes from the normal. Okay, and we swing it out until we get to 35. So this is an angle of incidence of 35. Okay? All right, there's our angle of incidence. We have index of refraction for the first material. Air is 1. All right, and there that is there. Index of refraction for the second material is a little bit too high. Let's make it a little bit smaller. We're going to take it down to 1.5. Oh, there we go. Good. Okay, so now we have... Our, our first material is air, our second material is glass, index of refraction of air is 1, index of refraction of glass is 1.5, and here's our angle of incidence with the normal is 35 degrees. And what we're going to do is we're going to calculate this angle down here. This is the angle of refraction. Okay, It's the angle between the refracted ray and the normal. And I'm looking at it, and it looks like it's about 23 degrees, so hopefully that's what we get. All right, let's try it out. So if we flip the screen over, okay, there's a, a rough diagram of what we're looking at. This is probably a better picture for you, okay? But that's that's up there for you to see. And what I did is I, I started out with Snell's Law is N1, material, the index of refraction material 1, times sine I. That's the sine of the angle of incidence. And that equals N2, which is the index of refraction material 2, times sine R, the sine of the angle of refraction. Okay, that's Snell's Law, that's a formula. And then you just plug in the numbers. N1 is 1, sine I is sine 35, N2 is 1.5, that's our second material, the index of refraction is 1.5, and we want to find sine R. Okay, and we scroll down, and what we're going to do is we're just, just a little bit of algebra, okay, just 1 times sine 35 divided by 1.5 gives you 0 0.382. Get your calculator out and try it, because, I mean, you want to be able to do it on the test, or quiz, or exam, or whatever. So, right now, everybody's just thinking, when's the test, when's the test? All right, so you try that out, and, and hopefully you'll get this number, 0.382, okay? That's the value for sine r, all right? And, but we're not done yet. What we need to do is we need to find this angle in degrees. And to do that, what you do, it, it depends on the type of calculator you have, but I think most people have a TI calculator. So what you do is once you get this number, 0.382, you hit second function sine. And, and what it'll do is it'll show a, a sine to the exponent negative 1. And then you hit answer or second function answer. All right. And then hit enter. And what it hopefully gives you when you do that is an angle of 22.5 degrees, which makes sense if we flip back to this. It's pretty close to what we were supposed to get. So it looks like we did that one right. Um, if you haven't seen inverse sine, it's called. It's when you take this, the value of sine and you you find the angle with it. Don't be shy. Okay, come come and see us and ask us about it. It's a really quick two minute lesson. We can show you like that. Okay, but um, I think that a lot of people have done this either last year or this year in math class. Okay, so let's let's try one more, shall we? And I think this one hopefully is a little bit easier. Okay, this one we have. A wave of light is traveling in glass and has an angle of incidence of 35 degrees. When it enters the air, the angle of refraction is 31 degrees. Find the index of refraction of the glass and draw a picture of the refraction. 
Okay, so let's take a look at this. So this time, hang on, let's go back. We're starting out inside glass, and we're going to move into the air. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, and I'm going to move it over here. And I'm going to take this, and I'm going to move it over here, because what's happening is the light is it's going from inside the glass to the air. And when that happens, if I click at the wave view, you're going to see you're going to see what happens here. The light in the in the glass it moves relatively slow. Okay, it has a slower velocity, and so the wavelength is really short. Okay, when it enters the faster me media like the air, the wavelength increases down here. The wavelength gets bigger, and the speed of the light is faster. And when it does that, the angle of refraction increases. All right. This light here, remember we talked about, about reflected rays. This is a reflected ray. And so what happens is this, is the light comes in and it hits and it bounces off and it reflects. And as you can see, these are the exact same angle with the normal. And that's called the law of reflection. It says that the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. Okay. All right, so let's go back to this problem. What do we have? We're going at an uh, angle of incidence of 15 degrees and an angle of refraction of 31. And this might take some messing around with. Let's see if we can do this. I'm going to take this, and I'm going to put an angle of incidence of 15 degrees. There you go. There's a 0. There's a 15. OK? And what I want to do is I want to have an angle of refraction of 31. And you know what? I don't think it's going to let me do it. Look at that. I think it's, it's probably. Yeah, it's not going to let me do it. We're, so we're limited by the, the simulation. What we would want to do is we want to get this, this line right up here. And so what we would have to do is have an, you can tell that the angle of refraction is going to be bigger, or sorry, the index of refraction here is going to be bigger than 1.6. Um, and the simulation only goes to 1.6. So we're out of luck. All right. Anyway, let's do the math anyhow. Here we go. So we draw the picture. And here we have Here's our glass and here's our air. Okay, it comes in at 15 degrees. There's the angle of incidence of 15 degrees. And we set up Snell's law as just n1 sine i. This is sine i. Okay, so the angle of incidence equals n2, that's the second medium, times sine r. And there's our angle r. We plug in the numbers n1 times sine 15. So that's the angle of incidence equals n2, that's air, is 1, and n2 equals 1, and sine 22, that's the angle of refraction, I think. Oh, 22. My bad. That's not, that shouldn't be 22. All right, you know what? I'll have to fix that up after. Um, so, you know what? Let's, let's cheat. Let's make this 22. All right, <laughs> there you go. Don't you wish you could just go on, on to the test and change the question? All right, so here's what we have. We could actually probably do this one now. If I take this and I get angle of 22, it happens at about there. There's an angle of refraction of 22 degrees. Okay, and that happens when n equals about 1.45. So you plug the numbers in, n1 is, we don't know, sine 15 equals n2 as a value of 1, sine 22. And you solve, and you get sine 1.45. Okay? Like I said, I'm sorry I had to go back and change the, change the question. I'm doing this one on the fly. So that those are examples of Snell's Law problems. I want to show you one more thing quickly. I want to show you what's called a critical angle. Critical angle is, this is how fiber optic cables work. Fiber optic cables send light signals through through cables. It's a really, really fast way to get internet, to get telecommunications, because it doesn't rely on electrons. It relies on light. Okay? And critical angle occurs when the angle of, it's the angle of incidence when the light is trapped in a slower medium. Okay? That means that the angle of incidence when the angle of refraction is 90 degrees.